You know when you just have a bit of hair, which doesn't want to do anything. Hi. Okay, so it has been absolutely ages since I even did a video. Um, I thought I'd do another pregnancy update kind of thing. Um, again, like I said in the last video, kind of, this is kind of more for myself, so I don't forget certain parts of my pregnancy um, more than anything else. Um, I'm really out of breath, and I've just taken ages to set this camera up. And I didn't want to be sad very well, so this is as good as I can get, sadly. But um, I'm going to do a little update, um, and I'll also show you what I've packed in the baby's hospital bag, because um, I have packed that now. Um, okay, so... <sighs> okay, so I am now 25 weeks and one day. Um what's gone quite fast like this second trimester has gone so much faster than the first one the first trimester i felt like it was never going to end i don't even know when the first trimester actually ends is it 14 weeks 13 14 weeks is around then when it ends um and i'm only a few weeks away from um starting my third trimester so this trimester has gone so much faster than my last trimester um what i can only be grateful for um so my first trimester i was really really sick um like i could keep anything down um even water was a struggle um but thankfully that has completely died down now and um i can't actually remember the last time i was sick really like properly sick um so that's good but uh, if we just go on to what's going on in my currently second trimester um so i'm probably not going to do another one of these videos until my third trimester anyway um so yeah for my second trimester it has been a lot better um we did find out the gender at twin no <laughs> we found a gender at 16 weeks um and we are having a girl um who's sat currently in her nursery what's in progress i need to paint the walls i need to finish a few things um i need to actually build her cot the cot is here but it's not built hence why the um pushchair is in this room um there's no way that the pushchair will be able to fit in this room when the cot's built because this room's not very big but i'll do a nursery tour once i've um decorated um but yeah so we are having a little girl um well, over the moon about i really 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 thought i was having a boy um what what would have been great like boy or girl it doesn't really matter um but i always pictured myself with a girl so when i thought i was having a boy it did take a little time to adjust in my head mentally um then i got really excited about it we actually started buying boys stuff as well so like clothes my mum bought her um, boys clothes also um because we really thought it was a boy um but no she's a girl and i've had um, obviously I had my private gender scan at 16 weeks then I had another one at almost 17 weeks because the sonographer lady who was doing my scan um, was only 95% sure she was a girl because she kept like crossing her legs over her parts um, so obviously she didn't want to say 100% so they invited us back for another gender scan with another sonographer um, to see basically a second opinion so nobody had told the second sonographer what the first sonographer thought the gender was so it was like completely raw. So we obviously had one with the first sonographer, she was 95% sure. And then the second sonographer, um, she was like 100% sure it was a girl as well. So we had two people saying girl, um, which was great. So that was pretty much confirmed. And then I had my midwife appointment the following Friday from the second scan. Um, so yeah, it's like the following week. Um, and she said that the heartbeat sounds like a girl. I don't know how true the heartbeat thing is with like boys and girls. Um, you know, is it, is it like a hundred under 140 is boy and then over 140 is girl or something like that? I don't know how true that is. If it's like an old wives' tale, but um, the midwife said that she would have said girl as well. Um, go for the heartbeat. So that's great. And then we obviously had our 20 week scan also, um, like four weeks later, um, and they are. Uh, also said girl and they also didn't know what the gender was so we've had it confirmed three times now that she's a girl so i'm very positive it's a girl it's a bit of a hard one because my sister when she was pregnant with her first um she had a scan and everything and they said it was a girl and i actually have a nephew because it wasn't a girl it was a boy so you know i i like to be doubly sure but um yeah 
it's definitely a get up um so that's great um we did find it a little bit hard to find a girl's name that we liked originally so we had a boy's name planned um but obviously it's a boy so we didn't use that um so we found it really hard to find a girl's name we have now found one um but i'm not saying it yet <laughs> um but yeah so she's a girl that's good um in terms of like how i'm feeling my heartburn is absolutely horrendous um i know like a lot of pregnant people um suffer with heartburn um so that's fine it just feels like i have to like pop rennies every two seconds just to get through the day because it really burns here and then i feel like it feels like i'm going to be sick because it's just like that pressure but it hurts to lay down because of it and everything it's just a bit it's a bit horrendous um obviously again if you go for our old wives tales maybe she's really hairy maybe i'm actually having gonna have a gorilla for a baby because <laughs> that's what it feels like now if we go off the old wives tale if you have heartburn you have a hairy baby then she's definitely gonna be a gorilla um so that's really bad and jack my partner has also suffered really bad from heartburn don't know if that's linked because i know that some um men can get like sympathy pregnancy symptoms i think they're called um so like they get something but um if that's true then he's definitely got the heartburn side of things because you've both got really bad heartburn and we've both never experienced it beforehand um so yeah um so also i have a being diagnosed with spd cannot for the life of me remember what it stands for um but basically if we go long story short it now really hurts to walk long places long places really hurts to walk for long distances um and i have now been signed off work because i was working in retail and obviously on my feet all day it just wasn't working um out at all um i went to the doctor to see if they could like basically tell you what to do that's why i went to them um because i was still working at this point and i went to the doctor to be like is there anything you can do anything you can give me like pain relief or um, even like you know you can get those like bump support bands i was thinking maybe you know it might be able to like give me one of them or something um but no instead he was like you're not fit to go to work and just sign me off um so now i'm signed off work until the 5th of january and obviously the baby is due in february so i'll already be on maternity by the time i actually get signed off of work essentially um it's quite boring being at home all the time but I, in a way i like it because all of my washing's up to date um the house is always nice and tidy i can actually get rest um because i'm ridiculously tired <laughs> so i can actually rest in the daytime as well um so there is perks to being signed off of work and then obviously the downside is sick pay doesn't pay very well <laughs> um and i'm bored um but that's quite minor isn't it i think like obviously we've only really got three months until she's here um i think i'll probably maybe i don't know appreciate the time i had with myself beforehand i don't know yeah so i have spd and it hurts to walk for too long also hurts to sit down for too long um and at night time when i'm getting out of bed to go to the toilet um what's a lot <laughs> um i in like every time i move over to one side i get like a massive shooting pain up my like hips up to like where my like, what they're called ribs are it's kind of like a shooting pain um it hurts a lot and obviously i can only take paracetamol and um i, I may as well take a smarty instead of a paracetamol because they really do much so you know but um but yeah so i have that what's a bit a bit rubbish um also um yeah, so I, I I do I do miss walking. I used to go on like long walks just something to do, um, and I feel like because I haven't been walking as much, I do think well I know that I've gained weight obviously in this pregnancy. So so far I've gained two stones, so that's twenty eight pound, um, in total. So I don't know if that's bad or good. Like it sounds like a lot of weight for me, but then obviously I've got to take into consideration as well like whatever the baby weighs. Um, but I think it's a seven hundred and sixty grams at the moment what's just over one and a half pounds um and obviously so you've got hair and you've got like some water and stuff and then obviously you've got weight that i've clearly gained <laughs> but it doesn't help as well i can't do as much exercise as i used to um so there's quite a lot of things 
so when she's born i can't wait just to get out there again get walking again it looks like a nice push chair now so i'll be able to um push push chair and just go for walks that way so i always find so when you push a push chair you generally walk faster i don't know if that's like just people i know or if that's just, like a, just a normal thing um but at least i'll be able to get more more steps in my day so that's not too bad um so i have my midwife appointment uh friday just gone um and i was talking to my midwife and basically the chances are um very slim like almost impossible of me having a like natural birth um which sucks because i've always wanted a i've always wanted a home water birth i know that's like quite drastic because now i'm gonna have to have a c-section so they're, they're quite different home water birth c-section they're not the same at all <laughs> um so, so i've always wanted a home water birth like all natural i think i don't do most women want i don't know most women want like all mother mother earth kind of stuff um and that is just not the case so i did ask my midwife um about that because i know that it's quite um well it's pretty unheard of of someone with a bicoordinate uterus or heart shaped um, womb that's what i've got um to give birth naturally but i've never actually known why and from the get-go of being pregnant and seeing like professionals every single professional has told me they're like oh no the baby will come early but nobody's ever told me why um but i was talking to my midwife and i said to her that i really didn't want a c-section um and she basically gave me that look and was like you're gonna have to have one essentially um i have got my consultant appointment um soon to discuss more details about that um but basically the reason is of why the likelihood of me having a planned c-section is so high up there is because where my um uterus is basically like a heart and um, they can um, both sides of the uterus contract at different times when you're a neighbor so obviously they kind of fight against each other to get the baby out baby can be in distress and obviously i kind of want her to be born as calmly as possible um for me and her um just for safety reasons if anything um i really didn't want a c-section i really didn't want one mainly because of the recovery side of things i think people who have c-sections they've it's, it's it's major abdominal surgery and then you're looking after a newborn at the same time i think it's quite a lot to ask of a woman um but if i have to have one i have to have one obviously i'm going to discuss that more with my consultant when i see him um but i've kind of come to terms with the fact now that i'm probably going to have to have one and if it's safer for me and um, the baby then it's kind of more important than my wants essentially like i also want a million pounds but i don't see that happening anytime soon but you know i'm housed and i'm safe so i should just be kind of grateful for that <laughs> um so yeah so the likelihood of me having a c-section and that is just clearly down to my bicoordinate uterus um but other than that like it had the actual bicoordinate uterus itself hasn't actually caused me too much problems so in my first trimester i had quite a few bleeds quite a lot of scares um emergency scans and stuff because it was kind of like i was like high i think i still am actually classed as high risk um but i was like really high risk on losing the baby because of my bicoordinate uterus um what obviously was a very stressful time because the swell was being obviously really sick um it's not a good time <laughs> but um but yeah like it's, it's kind of really calmed down now um i it's really weird because where the baby is sat she's very much like on this side so she is growing over to this side and like now and again i'll get a kick or a movement on this side but it's very much on this side what's my my left side yeah my left side um and then like lower pelvis and that's where i can feel her the most um she moves a hell of a lot um what obviously makes me feel good because at least i know she's okay but when you want to go to sleep or when you want to relax and she's like beating you up from the inside it sometimes you just want to just chill out <laughs> um but at least i know she's healthy so that's what matters um when she went for a 20 week scan as well she was measuring perfect um measuring exactly how she should be at her like gestation gestation 
I can't pronounce that word, um, but how far gone she was. <laughs> um, her legs, though, are six days behind. So everything else is in proportion, but her legs are a tiny bit short. But I also have short legs. So, you know, maybe she just takes after me. It was very unfortunate because of all the things she could have taken after me for, she clearly just took my short legs that we can seal as of yet. But yeah, other than that, like, not really much else to update you on. That's pretty much all that's been going on on that side of things. She's healthy. I'm relatively healthy other than my SPD. Um, I'm just being tired. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to update you on. Oh, I thought someone's at the door, but I was obsessed. Um, so I will now show you what I've got in my hospital bag for her um because i have packed it already <laughs> okay so this is the bag i've got it's one of the um backpack ones it says land on it chic mum mama mum and baby bag i don't know it's the one i wanted <laughs> that's what i know it is literally a backpack bag um, changing bag it's also got a little clip that you can clip over your push chair or you can put it on your back so what I wanted and my mum very kindly bought it for me so I can't complain but this is a bag it's not overly massive but it literally can fit so much stuff in here so if you go from the first compartment here if we open this um, I'm not planning to bottle feed myself, I'm planning to breastfeed. Um, so this is empty because I don't need to use it. But when she gets older, it'll be good. It has a little like bag here for snacks and in here as well is all like thermaled. So if they did put a warm bottle in there, it would stay warm. And there's three of them little pouches there. Just take that back in. And then we've got this pocket on the side. Um, it does have a little wipe dispenser. The wipes I've got in there at the moment doesn't work very well with that wipe dispenser though, because I've got the little angels um, wipes and they've got the little flip up plastic thing. But it does fit very nicely in this pocket. I can just go in there. There's another pocket on this side as well. Um, there's nothing actually in this pocket as of yet. I don't know what you meant to put in there. Maybe a drink for me. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, if I show you the back of the bag, there is a zip here, and there's like a whole compartment for like my phone, my keys, all that fun stuff. And this here opens, and that means I can get to the bottom of the bag if I need to. So say if like. I don't know, say if like the muzzies or some nappies drop down there, I need to get hold of them. It's a lot easier than rummaging through the whole bag. Now, if we open the actual bag, so it opens up. There is like metal in here, so it opens nicely. It doesn't like sag or anything. So I'll put this on the floor and I'll just take stuff out while I show you. So I was using a guide on an app that I use, um, I think it's like called Pregnancy Plus or something. Um, also tells you how the baby's doing. Sorry, I really need a drink. Um, yeah, it also just tells you the size. Um, it compares it to like fruit or treats or animals. <laughs> um, so you can sort of gather how big your baby is. Um, it's quite cool but on there as well there is a list of things for mum's bag baby's bag and the birth and partner's bag so that'd be jack so that's what the guide i've used okay so i have this little cardigan which just like a little knitted cardigan um, i think it's newborn i'm not quite sure because obviously it's hand knitted um but i would say that was new i don't know so i'll just put that there um, I've got a taggy, so it's basically, if you don't know what a taggy is, what I'm guessing most people do, there's a soft bit of material and it's got loads of different like textured tags um, and babies love it. I remember my little brother having one and um, 
yeah he absolutely loved it my mum made me this because she's very clever and she can do stuff like that but i love them so it's got a taggy so um she can hold on to something it's soft as well and i think she's more practical than a teddy isn't it um i've also got a a grow bag i think that's what it's called yeah a little grow bag sleep suit thing so the baby goes in there these do unpop um so your baby's arms can come out but it's like a little swaddle a little swaddle suit i guess um that'll keep her nice and warm and i just think they're the cutest little things because i think the babies are a little stingrays when they've got their arms in there um but my mum gifted me that one as well <laughs> And then we've got her, I think, I think it's going to be her coming home outfit. Um, let me just get the hat. So it's um, the Hungry Cat Pillar, says it. And look at his little feet, <laughs> just so cute. And it has a matching little hat. So she'd be dressed all like this, oh. <laughs> like this. And then I'll have a look at matching little hat. I think it's honestly the cutest thing <laughs> um, ever. So I'm going to bring her home in that, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure yet. I've packed it in the bag um, because I think it's really cute. And it's like first size. So I want her to wear it as kind of soon as possible. Um, for some other baby grows as well. I think I've packed four baby grows and four vests. So we've got this one as well, or it's just a little one with the um, little mittens that fold over. But it's just a cat. And this one is from Next, apparently. I've also got her this one, what's got cats all over it. And again, this has got the little um, inbuilt mittens her little hands um got this one also this has got like wildlife on it so it's got like, a little frilly top and it's just like a little all in one baby grow i love it when they've got little pockets what is a newborn gonna fit in this pocket but this one also has the built-in mittens i think they all do actually <laughs> before i say it to everything and then we've just got some vests these are quite plain we've got a pink one um a spotty gray and white one this one's really cute it's got little penguins on it and then a white and then we've got a floral one as well they're quite simple they're not very really exciting they're just vests and i've also got so we've also got the um hunger caterpillar hat um but i've got two other hats as well um they're just like these ones like with like little winnie the poos on see little winnie the poo they're quite cute apparently you needed them <laughs> and i've got these as well so this is like a mixture in here so we've got some bibs i don't know if you use bibs with newborns um i bought four just in case um, and then we've got three lots of muslin squares. Um, so we've got a plain purple one, a floral one, and then this one's got like really, really subtle stripes on it. But yeah, three lots of muslin squares. So I'll show you inside the bag now, it's like a little bit empty. So it's got loads of storage. So obviously, here are the nappies, just there and there. And this is where I put the muslins and the bibs and hats are there there's obviously another zipper here and in here at the moment all i've got is a little um travel pseudocrem um i got this free with my little bounty pack thing when i was like 16 weeks um so i thought that'd be quite a nice little travel one and last lastly I bought this really nice, um, I won't get it completely out because it's actually quite big, um, but it's just a pink blanket, but it's really, really nice texture. 
Um, I got it from Asda and this cost me, I think it was £6, I want to say. It wasn't very much. And it's absolutely massive and it's just really nice. Um, obviously, she's going to be born in February. If I, um, I don't know, I'll say if. So when I have my section, obviously it'll be two weeks early. Um, so she'll be two weeks early. Um, so she'll be born roughly around the 9th or the 10th of February. Um, but her due date is the 23rd of February. So she will be basically born in the winter um, and very cold. So it's important to have warm clothing um, for her. And for her, um, like coming out of hospital obviously into the big wide freezing cold world um she has got one of these like little pram suits it's got a little it <laughs> it's got little ears um and it's super soft it's got like little feet included and i like the fact that the zips come all the way down to the feet um so it will make it very easy to put on and off of her and it's just like that on the inside um, it's very soft obviously I know that you can't put your baby in this and then put it in the car seat because I know that's not very safe um, so I don't really know where you have to bring these um, because obviously I'm just going to be taking her from the hospital to the car and then having to take it off of her in the car but I'm going to take it anyway because it's really cute and it's really cosy warm so may as well um, but that's pretty much all I've got in her hospital bag. Um, I don't think I've forgotten anything. If I have, please let me know. Um, because I don't know what I'm doing. So it'd be helpful if someone could help me out. <laughs> um, but other than that though, I have 15 weeks left of this pregnancy. 13 weeks if you include, obviously, if you take away the two weeks, I'm going to have to take away for the C-section. Um, so 13 weeks, so it's basically three months. Um, left and then I'll have a little baby I'm very excited so we've pretty much got everything now um, and I will be starting the nursery very very soon um, so I'll do a tour of that as well once I've finished it um, but yeah I will show you my bump actually while we're here so here is oh, be greasy. so here is my belly and get it so you can see it properly yeah so here is my belly i'm 25 weeks and one day it's getting to a point where not a lot of things fit me so i'm quite limited on what i can wear um but i do like having a bump it's quite nice at the same time though i need to lose all the weight once she's here so i'm trying to curve what i'm eating a little bit but it's very hard because i'm very hungry all the time um but yeah if you manage to get to the end of this then thanks for watching um i will do a nursery tour when i finish the nursery as well so i don't know when that will be um but yeah thank you very much for watching bye